sure if anybody uh, has ever heard of Khalif Browder. I kind of want to close on that. I feel like Khalif Browder is a perfect example of this because when you think of school or prison pipeline, this young man was placed in an environment, a foster home, in the hood of New York, and he had no control over it. And he's out late with his friends one night, and he gets stopped, and they say that he stole a book bag with no proof. But let's just say that he did. He goes to Rikers Island. He spends, I believe, two to three years there over a book bag that was allegedly stolen. Again, no, no proof. Solitary confinement. He gets out of, uh, well, sorry, then he was beaten severely, jumped by prison guards, jumped by some of the, the prisoners there. And when he's released, he commits suicide within a couple years. What type of justice system do we have when that type of thing happens? The kid was 15 or 16 years old. So we can't pull this young man to the side and say, even if you did steal the book bag, why would you do that? What can we help you with? Oh, you're from a foster home. Oh, you did this. The kid was brave. He could have gone to do great things, but we'll never know now because our system is so set on saying, you're black and brown, this is what's going to have to be. We've never had a point in time in our history with black and brown people where we said, these are the issues you're dealing with. Let's restore. Let's repair because we inflicted these upon you. It's get in line. Let's get tough on crime, law and order. No, I'm in this hood because you placed me here. You didn't give me a loan. You ran around my community. So we, we, uh, we tried in school, but until it becomes a practice in society, we allow these kids to have restorative justice and then go out to the world that's going to still look at them as if they're criminals just because they're walking with their pants sack.